Well, how do there, chums? As I, Captain of the Steve's, and today, chums, there's a cup of tea with Captain Steve, and I'm going to be hitting up the IGN first footage of Dragon's Dogma 2, people. And we're going to be looking at it and reacting to it together. Okay, so let's jump on over onto the old tint of webs, and here we are. I haven't watched this as yet. I did watch a bit of Asmund Gold reacting to it, but I don't think he's ever played the first one, so I don't know what... I don't know whether he thought... This is all new or whether it's not or whether we could compare it to much but i'm an avid fan of dragon's dogma the first outing i've got a whole playlist on dragon's dogma of me completely platinum it so if you want to hit that one up go hit it up and at the moment dragon's dogma one is like five quid pretty much everywhere it's a bargain go grab it play the heck out of it until march you're gonna love it and you're gonna love the fact that i recommended it anyway let's hit this up let's hit play on this Right, I'm just going to turn the volume down a little so I can sort of talk over this, okay? This Let's month's just make IGN first is Dragon's Dogma 2. Ah. All throughout the month of January, we've got brand new gameplay, interviews, deep dives, impressions, mm. exciting reveals, and more. We got to play about 10 hours of the game, so we've got plenty of ground to cover. To kick things off, here's a collection of gameplay clips covering footage of the fighter, thief, warrior, and sorcerer vocations. Make sure to keep an eye on this space for more Dragon's Dogma 2 all throughout the month. Right, okay. Does he, does he stop talking now? Good. Okay. So, I can talk a little now, can't I? Let's just turn that down a tad. Righto. Okay. Well, you can hear the pawns in the background sort of still chatting all the time as you're hacking people to death, which is great. They've all got English accents. Lovely. Up for that. Queen's English and all. How does the day find you, Arisen? Yes, it finds me well. The master works well. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> just to love all the chatter in the original. I just saw this, the wolf, did you see him in the background? He got, sort of got stuck on a rock over there in the background and went all janky for a second. Did you see that? I'll rewind it slightly. And look, as he sort of goes round, you watch the wolf in the background. Here, I'll get rid of my pointer. Just over here. Watch him over here. Look, look, on this rock. Look, uh, he's completely... But yeah. Used to see that happen occasionally in the first one. Cool. Like the fact that you've got area effect magic. Having a wizard on your team really helps. Or sorcerer, or whatever you want to call them. Well, that, that I think is new. Where he jumped in the air and then came down. Bang. That was quite nice. I quite like that. I like the fact that his weapon is enchanted and imbued with fire. Very cool. Very nice. Ah, the tree sort of goes invisible if, if the camera goes behind it. That didn't used to happen in the first one. That helps with visibility. Very cool. What the fudge is that giant beetle on the side of the tree there? Well, it wasn't moving much. A trove beetle. Okay, it didn't look very alive, that trove beetle. But yeah, cool. A little bit sort of Monster Hunter well desk that, isn't it? Okay. Well, that's quite a nice environment. We're trapped. Holy fudge! It's a troll! There's a troll in that bridge! It's not even a bridge, it's a wall, but there you are. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's mm. a good cup of tea. Destructible environments. Nice. Kind of made it obvious that's what you needed to do. But it's nice that they've sort of pinpointed it that way. I'd imagine this was early game footage and this is the first time they've come across that sort of interaction. Pretty darn lovely. Oh, he's not dead, guys. He's got a freaking energy bar. Start clouting the living shite out of him before he gets up. Yeah, attack the eye. Good shout. Look how much energy he's losing there. Loads of it. So... Traversing the enemies was always a thing, even in the first game. It's one of the things I used to love. Now, what you can do is, as your stamina bar gets low, the yellow bar at the very bottom of the screen, you can access access your inventory, and you can eat something just in the like pause menu, because it's not sort of online per se. You have online pawns, but it's not actually running live online. So you can pause it and just eat stuff, Yeah, recover your energy bars. It does tell you there. And they're going in and they're doing exactly that. Cool. There you go. To recover sorts of all sorts of stuff. It says right behind me here what you're going to actually gain back. The UI looks very intuitive. More intuitive than the old UI. They've improved that, which is great. 
And I like the fact that they've kept all the same of sound effects in the UI. And this is the same musical score from the first Dragon's Dogma. It really does sort of bode well, all this sort of nods to yesteryear. And you can see on the actual creatures some fine, like, hairs and things that have been added. There's some visual improvements to the creatures and to the water effects. The water effects now look freaking sublime. Something that doesn't look so sublime, though, is the textures on the rocks. The rocks look like they're straight out of the first outing and just play straight into here. The density of the foliage looks like it's been increased slightly over the original, but I wouldn't say that it's like a vast improvement over the original. If you play in the original, if you pick up the original, you'd see what I mean. Although the original is quite an old game, it came out at the same time as Skyrim. I think a lot of people picked up Skyrim and overlooked this gem of a game. People, if you've never played Dragon's Dogma 1, what you're seeing here, the magic, the combat, the scaling on the creatures, even some of the environments, you're going to be hitting up this at the, in the first game. You can do all this in the first game and it looks almost as nice as this in the first game. Even now, it stands the test of time. Hit up the original. Heck yes. In fact, I know I've given you the full playlist, but I did do a review of Dragon's Dogma in like 2022. Is it still worth playing now? And I've got a video for that, the review of that. I'll put it up there. Go hit that up. It's well worth a look. So this is the second troll that they've tackled now. So I'm, I'm kind of a bit bored of seeing them tackle trolls. But you can see here he's just standing up and running around to get some of his stamina back. You can do that. That's quite a gnarly... Oh, he done well to stay on there. It, it's quite difficult. It's a bit of a skill to do what he's doing right now. So hair, hats off to you, mate. You're doing quite well, little IGN games tester. Now, at the bottom, near to the IGN logo, you can see there Twin Fangs and Carve. Okay, so he's only got two abilities assigned. You can actually assign four abilities to that sort of little wheel there. So, yeah. Let me cool to see some more of the abilities. The combat in this is second to none. Even Monster Hunter, I don't think, comes close to Dragon's Dogma when it comes to the combat and the skills. I would say where Dra Dragon's Dogma isn't as good as um, Monster Hunter is the creature AI. The creature AI in Monster Hunter, it actually feels like you've, you've actually really accomplished something amazing when you take out one of the monsters in Monster Hunter. It's nearly on par, Dra Dragon's Dogma. When you take out a mega big boss in Dragon's Dogma, you're like, oh my days. You sort of take a breather, you're like, oh, that was, that was epic. Similar to Monster Hunter. What these creatures don't do, though, is halfway through the battle, run off and hide in a cave somewhere and get half their energy back. There's, there's none of that messing about. Straight in, bosh, bash, bosh, it's dead. Freaking lovely. Yeah. And then there's a whole levelling system in this. You're going to get experience points. You can unlock new skills. You can go to town. You can buy yourself new armours. You can imbue those armours and do all sorts with them to make them a little bit more powerful. But um, by and large, what you get is what what you see is what you get in Dragon's Dogma from the shop in a roundabout way. There's a little bit of uh, making them a little bit better, but not not a great deal. Not like in Monster Hunter World. You don't kill monsters to craft yourself new armor in this one. In the old one, Dragon's Dogma One, you used to be able to get idols though. If you gave like a golden idol to your favorite shopkeeper, they would actually get better favor with their merchant. And then they'll get better gear inside of their shop. So you had to be careful who you gave the golden idol to. Because you only got like two golden idols in the whole game. Unless you um, took them to the black cat and made a, a forgery. But even then they could tell that it was a forgery and the shop wouldn't upgrade. Okay, cool. So we're moving away from that giant sort of ogre. I'm liking that giant warrior flaming blade there. Pretty nice. Is that another freaking ogre? Is it just going to be ogres that we're seeing? Okay, this is this is this is a small sort of ogre. The last one was a troll. This is an ogre. So we've seen two trolls, and this is an ogre now. Oh, he just drop kicked him! Freaking heck! He's been watching a lot of WWE and the WWF. Oh, lovely! Freaking flamethrower move. Shame we didn't see who actually did that and how. Nice, done that and how. Uh, my my voice isn't quite what it should be. I've got a bit of man flu, people. 
pretty nice. These guys do not like fire. They also do not like female characters. They get a little bit horny and randy if you've got a female in your team. They go like into chaos mode. So yeah, They're a little bit randy these guys. You've got to be careful if you've got females with you. They will just attack you if you've got a female with you. If it's just a male party, they will sort of just not be all too interested to start out with. It's only if you attack them that they'll attack you. You've got a female though, they'll go straight at you. Boom. Awesome. Nice. Set them on fire. I like all the fur textures on these. Far, vastly improved over the original, the actual fur textures. I mean, you see the rock that he's standing on now? That, that looks pretty... A lot of the rocks, the textures aren't that improved over the original, to be honest. Yeah. If you played the original, you'll know exactly what I mean. But what I am seeing is a lot more distance draw. I'm seeing a lot more detail in the foliage. It, it looks better, especially the water effects. The water effects in this look very nice. Cool. Then again, the water in the first one wasn't too bad. But you've got a bit more reflections going on here now. I think that might be done with shaders, though. Rather than... Um, it doesn't look like it's got ray tracing in this. Okay, crawling. That's a bit different. Normally, your um, your pawn would come over and pick you up or, or give you some sort of energy buff like just happened there. That's very similar to the original. If one of your pawns gets downed, if your pawns get knocked out, you could go and pick those up and they'll get revived. The only time you couldn't do that is if they fell off a ravine and fell in the water or something and died that way. Then you'd have to revive them at a rift stone. But yeah, the combat in this looks quite fast, just like the original. I mean, this is just like the original in a roundabout way. Oh my days, he's down to freaking red energy bar now. Man, he's seriously getting annihilated. He could do it maybe a sword and shield for this guy. Rather than the giant warrior sword. Because you've got no defensive ability when you've got the warrior's blade. Okay, cool. You might want to draw your sword, my friend. Before you go at the enemy. Okay, it looks like an NPC's just rode into the middle of this battle. This is the sort of stuff I used to love about Dragon's Dogma. You could be taking on like a troll like this, or, or uh, whatever he is, ogre, and a griffin could fly in and just join in in the battle, or some NPCs will be walking past. And it, it's freaking crazy, this game. You could walk the same path uh, like a hundred times and have a hundred different experiences on that path. A lot of people used to complain that the uh, fast travel system wasn't that fast and they would spend ages walking from one end to the other end and they'd always encounter the same mobs in the same places. Yes, there was elements of that. You would always encounter goblins in the same place and the smaller mobs like the harpies and things like that. But every now and again, a big creature was spawning. A dragon would fly over or a griffin would fly in or something strange would happen. It was, nev it was never 100% certain it was going to be the same journey day after day and i used to love that oh, cool. oh dear now that buffalo's in the way of everything isn't it go on cart be on your way <laughs> the, the little chap on the cart just going damn me <laughs> the actual npcs and the side quests in the original dragon's dogma are always quite cheesy very tongue-in-cheek and I'd imagine there's going to be some of that inside of this. And the acting was like B-movie quality sort of acting. It sort of took you back to the Jason and Argonauts and Sinbad days. And you know what? It kind of went well with the actual theme of the game. So, you know, I kind of liked its cheesy hamminess. Oh, my days. That was pretty darn freaking mental. Was that, that smash there. Oh, look, he's killed a pawn in one hit. So... You can revive that pawn. You should be able to run around. You see that little bar going down right now? The little white dots. If that hits, hits the bottom, you're going to have to revive them in a um, in a revival stone. There you go. Look. He's, oh, you've got to hold it for a while now to revive. Boy, you could just go do it. It was really quick. Takes a bit more time now. Oh, he's just downed another one. He just done a freaking smash on another one. And you can see there, one pawn actually picked up the downed pawn and moved him closer to the arisen. So you could get them revived. They didn't used to do that before. They'd just leave them where they felled. Cool. Oh, it looks like an NPC's joined in. It's just a little bowman there. He's not like a pawn. It's just somebody helping from the back of that cart. That's so cool. Cool. 
And you can see down at the bottom by the little mini map that there's another pawn that's been downed. It's flashing red at the moment. But there's also go help wait and to me. And you can just use the directional pad to bring the pawns either to you, spread them out, that sort of thing. Or if you want them to help you, like to revive you or to give you a healing potion, you can hit help. You can actually give them items that they can carry on their person. And they will actually use them when they need to use them. The AI in the original was good. And I imagine in the second one, it's only got to be better than the original. It can't be worse. So I'm really looking forward to the pawn interactions with this game. And I do like the minimap down there as well. Cool. You might be able to change the uh, level of how close the camera is to you. So maybe you might have spotted that guy sneaking up behind you then. If you're zoomed out a little bit more. But this is cool. Oh, what? What profession is this guy? He looks like a sorcerer or some sort of cross sort of thing. I'm not too sure. Galvanize magic bolt. Magic bolt. Okay, cool. Maybe he's a mystical... I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty darn cool. I think this is just a sorcerer class. Yeah, or mage or something. But yeah, you get the... Later you get like two different specialised ones that you could mix together. Or at least you did in the first one. So you could become like a, a magical archer. Or a mystic knight. This has got multiple lock on there as well. But I, I love doing all the spells in this game. The spells in this game are great. A lot of the combat in this are great. My favourite is... Well, my favourite was in the first one. The Magical Archer. Because you could lock onto multiple points on them. Do -do 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 -do. Fire all these arrows up into the air and they come down. It would be awesome. Or at night time you had like this holy sort of bolt that you'd fire up and it would just light up the whole area. And it was great. It would just destroy all the skeletons. All the bones just dropped to the floor and stuff. It was brilliant. Like a holy bolt. That was cool. Okay, so this troll is a big troll. And he's got loads of armour all over him. So in this case, if you break off his tusks, the helmet falls off. And then if you destroy the chains around his ankles, all the other chains start dropping off and all of his armour starts to fall off. If you keep attacking his actual attacking arm, the right arm, he will drop that club. So on some enemies like this, you have to be quite tactical in what you target and how you target, depending on what you want to do. If you want you know, to lower their defensive options or whether you want to lower their um, offensive options. But yeah, he's getting pummeled. So... Whenever I played Dragon's Dogma 1, I played through the whole of Dragon's Dogma 1 on the easiest level setting to start out with. So I could get to know the story and all that sort of stuff. Then after I've done all of that, I would then put it onto the hard setting or the ultra hard setting. And I, if you watch my playlist, that's exactly what I do. I, I'd done it all on easy, but then I went to the hardest level, went through it all on hard. And that's how I got my platinum trophy. Also speed ran it as well. Pretty good fun. Man, he's getting trounced. Or she. The IGN person. Getting completely annihilated by this guy. But it looks like a little bit of the armor's come off, but hasn't managed to make them drop the uh, club. Now, when you've got your pawns down like that, you need to go revive some of your pawns. Because if you've got your pawns there, he's going to target them. So, at the moment, it's just going to target you and just that one. Yeah, good option. Get him off the ground, because that can give you the breather that you need. Look, he's bringing him to you. Cool. I am, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Everything that I loved about the first one looks like it's come over into the second one. And not only just come over, but in being improved. Sometimes, in some cases, marginally. In other cases, massively. I like how all the... Um, oh, my days. Look at that spell. That was cool. I mean, we used to have a, a sort of similar sort of spell that put out ice just in a pillar. But that was like a little ramp and then a pillar. That looked more realistic. Very cool. But even like there, you could see the creature sort of breathing and its fat sort of rippling as it started to move. Love it. There you go. All the armor's off now. Cool. And sometimes your pawns will actually give you little hints and tips and say, try this, try that. Oh, is that it? Okay. Oh, well, that, that seems to be all the video. We didn't really see a massive variety of creatures. I was hoping to at least see a griffin or something. We only saw trolls and ogres. Dang it. Okay, people. 
Well, it is what it is. I mean, but there we are. From the actual deep dive onto this then and the IGN first, I'd say that, yeah, a lot of what I liked on the first one has come across. And a lot of the stuff that, you know, it's got those sort of nods, those little visual cues, and also sort of the audio nods and cues. You know, I like the sound effects inside the UI, the UI itself, and some of the actual sort of character interactions and how they speak and how they communicate. The typical English sort of language, the Queen's English, I guess, very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly up for this. So the new things that look like they've brought in, it looks like they've brought in a fair few new vocations. I've just noticed in the background, one of the actual characters inside of their party has got like a lion's face, so one of the beastmen. So it looks like you can create a beastman as your own character, or at least a pawn. And uh, not only that, after you actually beat that troll, they, they send some sort of high five. Like, yeah, you, know, you didn't used to do that in the first one. Destructible environments weren't in the first one. It is now inside of this. So that's great. I mean, you can always pick up goblins and throw them off cliffs, but now you can actually blow up bridges and all sorts of stuff. Well, rock formations in this case. Convenient barrel there, just in the middle of nowhere to do just said act. <laughs> but yeah. I'm very much looking forward to this. This will be coming to my channel in March, people. Hopefully you can hit it up. If it sounds interesting to you, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and be sure to check out my playlist on Dragon's Dogma 1. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.